In our last episode, we just completed the epic six-day W trek in Torres del Paine National Park and we're wrapping up our time in southern Chile. We had high hopes to explore deeper into Patagonia, but the pandemic had other ideas. We're getting on the bus now to go back to Puerto Natales and stay there for a couple nights, and then we're gonna make our way back to the U.S. We make the hard decision to head back to the States. With no awards flights available, our cheapest route sends us to Washington, D.C. We're Mason and Shelley, and we're just adrift. Episode 143. Goodbye, Chile. Hello, Washington, D.C. In this episode, we search for cherry blossoms, take a self-guided tour through the National Monument, eat delicious seafood, and visit the Spy Museum. Capitol building right now for the start of our our walk today and as you can see it has the fences up which you know it's not normally there. Typically you'd be able to walk up to the fountain just below the building but because of recent events they have it all fenced off. There's heightened security but it is still such a beautiful place, such a historic place to see. This is my first time in Washington, D.C., checking out some of these monuments. Of course, because it's spring 2021, there's a lot that's shut down, but there's also a lot to see, including the National Mall, which more or less runs a huge stretch of Washington, D.C., all connected by garden space. Shelly and I are walking in between the Capitol building and the Washington Monument right now. And this park is perfect for a Sunday. It is so nice to be outside. And I think if I lived here, I would spend a lot of time here. It's a beautiful public park. Uh, it's just people walking all over the place and enjoying their Sunday, having picnics, riding scooters. Uh, I love the layout of how everything is set up. It's easy to find your way around to all of the top spots to see. They're all right here. The National Mall takes you from the Capitol building all the way down past the Washington Museum. It continues on with the long uh, reflection pool that I'm sure you've seen uh, all the way to the Lincoln Memorial. Uh, on either side, it's quick to get to the White House and then on the opposite side, the Tidal Basin with all the cherry blossoms that we're going to go visit. This place is, you know, you've seen it in movies, we've seen it. I mean, it's such an iconic American space to be and so much history. It's just so nice to be here today. It is really grand in person. Uh, the monument's 555 feet tall, and when it was built, it was the tallest building in the world. The plans for a monument actually started while Washington was still in office. However, he didn't feel it was an appropriate use for federal funds. It wasn't until after he passed that a group came together and raised private funds to start the memorial. They did a design competition, and Robert Mills was awarded the design. The design behind us is much different than the original design, however. Also, you'll notice there's two different types of stone. Construction began and they soon ran out of funds. So they have one color stone a portion of the way up where construction stopped. It wasn't until many years later that the project was picked back up by Ulysses Grant on the 100th anniversary of our country. We are walking from the Washington Monument to the Lincoln Memorial now and you walk by the very famous reflection pool. The reflection pool is one of those things that looks bigger in real life than when you see it in pictures or on a movie. 
The reflection pool isn't very deep. It's only about 30 inches in the center where it's the deepest. And it holds almost 7 million gallons of water. I cannot wait to see the Lincoln Memorial either because it is probably the highest single thing on my list of things to see today. grand place to be and there's so much history and such an important person yeah. to where we are today and I don't know it's just you've it, seen it before right I was young though all I remember is that I felt so small and it was the biggest person I had ever seen statue -wise. biggest statue yeah I mean it's pretty big it's, it's pretty big I actually expected this one to be a little bit bigger well I mean if you see it as a child, it's pretty huge. Yeah. But as an adult, it's smaller than what I remembered it to be, but it's still. The pose, I think, is one of the really cool things about it, because it definitely is very fitting. Something about. It exudes confidence, trust. It's hard to wrap it's it all up into words, explain but. Explain it if you're not here to see it, but it just has a, a real monumental feeling. Absolutely. Uh, I had also not known that they had put two of his most important dresses on either side of the wall, which that's really cool seeing those. So we're here at the Aerospace Smithsonian Museum. It's closed, but outside are the trees that we thought were the cherry blossoms, but they're not. They're also from Japan, but they're magnolias. They're really gorgeous pink blooms, uh, but definitely not what we thought we were seeing. We are at King Street Oyster Bar for lunch and the food looks amazing. But first, let's talk about the space. This space is perfect for right now because they have tons of outdoor space on this patio, and then they're also spacing people out inside on a few tables. But to get back to the food, you're starting off with a half dozen East Coast oysters. These are Prince Edward Island oysters. They're lucky enough to be able to cross the border right now, which nobody else can do. But we have some Queen's Cup and Raspberry Point oysters. They look amazing. Shelly got a hot lobster roll. Kudos to her, that was a great choice. And some really good looking fries. And I got these really cool looking, very unique tuna tacos that instead of a tortilla, they use a very thin slice of radish. They look fantastic. Everything looks perfect. I got the lobster roll because we're up here and it looks amazing. So I'm gonna try that. Not a huge surprise, but it's, it's really good. The bread is buttery. The lobster is sweet and fresh and cool and it's paired with french fries, which are really good. I love really crispy fries, and these are. They're like ground on all, all sides. You guys have to try this. I know, this radish shell is really cool. They just, 
they did sear the tuna off. I was wondering if it was gonna be seared or kind of like a poke or something like that, like raw. It's got avocado on there, so you got me there. Love that guacamole, that avocado. The radish shell is really nice. It's actually, I was gonna say it's not bitter at all. Like that, like a radish typically is, but now a little bit of the bitterness is coming through. But it sort of cleans up the bite. Tuna's delicious, avocado's delicious. It's a really nice little taco. So you guys know I love oysters, and so this place is a great place to be, but uh, every aspect of this menu is for seafood lovers. From their appetizers, to their sandwich, to their entrees. There's tons of things that I can order as a pescatarian that I would love to have. So one visit, it's hard to get everything that I want to try. We've been enjoying a lot of movies recently, all about spies, so we're here at the Spy Museum. Yes, sir. The Spy Museum was so cool. It's almost too much. I mean, the place is jam-packed with information, interactive games, movies, audio. It's almost a sensory overload. If you have time, you could probably spend an entire day here if you wanted to. Mission accomplished. If you come to Washington, D.C., definitely don't miss out on the Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial. This place definitely has some gravity to it. It has some of his most powerful quotes etched in the stone walls on either side of his statue, and he has a beautiful view out into the tidal basin of the Potomac. Make a career of humanity. Commit yourself to the noble struggle for equal rights. You will make a greater person of yourself, a greater nation of your country, and a finer world to live in. One of the things Shelly and I were looking forward to coming this time of year were the cherry blossoms. And unfortunately, it looks like they haven't started yet because we've heard that this is one of the best places in all of Washington, D.C. to view them. Well, 
Well, they're getting ready to bloom, but we're not quite there yet. These trees, I'm sure, are amazing when they're in full bloom. Uh, they're over 100 years old. They were a gift from Japan in 1912, which is fantastic, but, but we'll have to come back to see these when they're in full bloom. We just walked by the Veterans War Memorial and it's a unique place. It's, you know, in the, in the realm of some of the monuments and memorials around here, it's not, doesn't stand out very much. It's really just this wall that almost follows the contour of a field. It's really when you walk along the wall and see how long the wall is compared to how small the names on the walls are that it becomes such a powerful place and the reality of, of what it represents of the people that, have, that were lost in the Vietnam War. This is it for us today, guys. It is incredible how much there is to see here in the National Mall, even though it's spring 2021 and a lot of museums and stuff are closed. Yeah, even with everything closed, it's a full day of seeing the memorials and the monuments. So I would definitely still recommend coming. It's great with the weather. And, and if you come even a little later, you, maybe you'll see the cherry blossoms. The amount of outdoor park space here is really incredible. It's really nice. So you could spend the whole day outside. Great family, Easily. family location. Absolutely. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. We will see you guys next time.